How are we really going to gauge the success of this day versus others? Uh, I think it's going to be very hard to do that. I, I, I assume that they'll put out another press release with uh, some uh, hints and clues in there as to how it did. You know, we think this could maybe contribute about a billion in sales. You know, for the company, you're talking about maybe 50 percent year over year growth. That all said, that still only accounts for about I don't know three percent, maybe four percent of the quarter's uh, total uh, revenue. Uh, uh, capture. And the one key thing is, given the timing of Prime Day, it's not running into any crush of other shipments. So it doesn't, it's not running into holiday shipment uh, crushes. So that way you avoid some of the logistics problems that later in the year events would have. But we think it's, a, it's a, just a sign of the maturity or the growth of Amazon. We don't look at it as a major uh, investment thesis point one way or the other, though. Uh, Jason, the myth of Amazon getting pretty large at this point, they're uh, disrupting everybody and everything. It seems this year their emphasis is even more on the ecosystem, ordering through the Echo, giving you discounts on dash buttons. Is that how we should look at this, Amazon really trying to prime its ecosystem with this day? I, th I think that's right. I mean, again, there tends to be a lot of focus on the revenue or the top line. But if you think about it, if you're giving 30% off uh, or more, um, what's your gross profit on that? And, and also remember, um, this is about a day to bring people on the platform and then really to encourage those third party sellers to really see what Amazon can do with them. So we don't know what kind of discounts they effectively give the third party sellers to be there. And so there's just a whole lot of moving parts. But to, to back it up, if you look at the most recent quarter, retail products grew 16 percent, but retail subscription services grew 52 percent. So when you really think about this, if the future is really about more digital, if they can get you to get an Amazon Fire TV, an Echo, a Dot, that's really what they're thinking about. Mark, what about the international story? Amazon is adding three new countries this year to Prime Day, China, India, and Mexico, I believe, all growing markets. What kind of international growth is Amazon facing when it comes to Prime, and what kind of opportunity is it? So, uh, you know, Amazon now is about a 50-50 company. About 50% of its retail sales are outside of the U.S. I think, uh, you know, earlier there in the show, there was a commentary about how international markets are probably seeing better growth. That's the point of view of our strategist, Jonathan Golub at RBC. And uh, companies like Amazon are well levered to international growth. Now, they still got a couple of markets that are very early stage. Uh, India is one of those. And we would expect Amazon to push more and more into other markets like, uh, like Brazil. It's definitely part of the growth story. Its growth there is faster than in North America. Although there's a couple of flywheels that worked in the U.S. that have yet, not yet shown up in international markets, but we expect them to. One of those is Prime, probably the rollout of newer categories like groceries. And then third is the rollout of these Echo devices. We barely have had an impact in the U.S., but if we look back on this three years from now and we see continued acceleration and growth for Amazon in the U.S., my guess is that will be because of Echo and then just forward that, you know, another year or two in international markets, and that will be the driver in international markets, that, those Echo devices. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.